If you're studying for the ATP knowledge test, you may think you were done with E6Bs and time and root calculations, but you'd be wrong. In fact, the questions just get more complicated on the ATP test. Let's look at this question from the test bank here. You depart the Chicago Midway Airport on the Midway 9 SID. Your level off point is on the 270 radial at 19 nautical miles from the Gipper Vortac. With the winds aloft forecast to be 230 at 51 knots and a magnetic variation of 1 degree west, what true airspeed should be maintained to arrive over CRL Vortac 42 minutes after level off? We'll need to figure out our ground speed required to make the CRL Vortac in 42 minutes, so let's first calculate our distance. Let's start by looking at our departure, the Midway 9. We depart from whichever runway it's not specified in the question, and we climb and turn to intercept a radial off the Gipper VOR. This is the 270 radial. We continue in the climb and level off when we're 19 miles from Gipper. We then join the en route phase of our flight. We'll be flying towards CRL, the Carlton Vortac, along J554. The box symbol along J554 tells us the total distance of the airway between Gipper and Carlton is 129 miles. So if we add the 19 miles from our level off point to Gipper and then 129 miles from there to Carlton, we get our en route distance of 148 miles. The problem says we need to make this distance in 42 minutes. So here comes the E6B. We want to align the time, 42 minutes, on the inner scale with the distance, 148 miles, on the outer scale. Once we did that, we moved down to have a look at the 60 on the inner scale with a black box that says rate on it. This will line up with how many miles we travel in 60 minutes, in other words, our speed in nautical miles per hour. It lines up with 211. This is our required ground speed to get to Carlton in 42 minutes. Now, we need to take the wind and course and convert to true airspeed. Our magnetic course will first be 090 as we fly inbound to Gipper along the 270 radial. Next, the first part of J554 will be outbound along the 082 radial. Finally, we'll fly inbound along the 267 radial of Carlton, which is a course of 087. Averaging these, we can use 086 as our mean magnetic course so that we can apply it to wind, which is reported in true degrees. We have one degree west variation here, so we subtract from 086 to get true course of 085. And the question states that our wind aloft is 230 degrees at 51 knots. Back to the E6B, this time the wind side. We'll start by sliding wind direction under true index. Then, let's make a little markup from center for the wind speed, 51 knots. Next, we spin to set the true course of 085 degrees under center. We don't know our true airspeed, we know our required ground speed. That'll read under the center hole, so let's slide the card such that the ground speed of 211 reads under center. Now, the red mark we made will read our true airspeed, 171 knots. Back to our answer choices, we see that choice C is correct. So nothing out of the ordinary on these questions, but unlike in private, there are a few more steps involved and you need to pull information from multiple sources.